Bada bing, bada bing. Welcome. Wait, 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 wait. That didn't feel right. Bada bing, bada bing. No. Okay. Bada bing, bada bing. <laughs> I'm so confused. Bada bing, bada bing. Welcome to this week's Bacon a Mystery, Bacon a Murder episode. That is the 10th Bada Bing Bada Bam that we've done, okay? This is the hardest part of the entire show, I'm gonna be honest with you. You're a power battery, so don't get in line. No, start a, come on, start a riot. When they love you much, no, it's pain, fake, you even hate. Welcome to part two of the glory. Do you know what day Woo! I'm filming this? I'm filming this March 11th. I was gonna film it March 10th, the day that it came out, but that was nearly impossible. But I'm literally, I watched all eight hours of the glory part two. I think it was more than eight hours, back to back to back. And here we are. Oh, it gets juicy. If you guys didn't watch part one, you need to go watch part one because none of this is gonna make any sense at all. But The Glory is this massive K-drama on Netflix. And it's all about the question of how far would you go for revenge? Imagine in high school, you were bullied by a group of rich kids. You have Eve, the ringleader of it all, the popular girl, the evil one. She went around burning people's arms and legs with curling irons. She scarred her victims permanently, disfigured them permanently for life. She would drive them to the brink of almost ending their own lives. Like this is how evil this lady is. She did it with the help with her of her little minions. So we have Jay, the guy that she used to like in high school, and the guy that she now actively cheats on her husband with, and is potentially the biological father of her child that she has with her husband. Mm. It's complicated. Then we have Sarah, the rich, druggy friend that was in it for the fun, and her dad owns this massive church in Korea, and they just make millions of dollars off of offerings. Then we got Mina, this little minion that tortured people just so that she could fit in with the rich kids. She just was desperate to be accepted by them. Her whole identity is wanting to be rich and being accepted by the elites. And then you have Ryan. Ryan is the one that assaulted a lot of the victims because he just wanted to. He's really creepy. He will ruin your life and all of them, this, this mix of five devious people, they will bully you until you have nothing left. So how far would you go to get your revenge on them? And what if that revenge takes 20 years to do? Would you still do it? Would you center your whole life around getting revenge? And what even happens once you get your revenge? Exactly. Who are you afterwards? That's the glory part two. Wait, is there more after this season or? Okay, so there are t conversations about how there can be a glory part three because it's open-ended. There's definitely room for another chapter. However, Netflix has not confirmed and Netflix are the kings and queens of being like, you like it? Cancel it. <laughs> I don't know what their freaking deal is. Cancel it. I'm going to give you a random ass Christmas movie nobody asked for instead. But it's better to end it on a good note, though. Yes. Yeah. And this is so good. So go. And you're part saying Stephanie told me this is better <laughs> than the part one. I think it was better because I was so stressed throughout the whole of it. I feel like part one was just amping it up, setting you up with the history, mm. and part two, you actually see the smart revenge plots being unfolded, mm. and you see the bullies fight back. So I think it's more fascinating. Part one really was about high school. Part two. Oh, we're getting in thick. So please go watch part one that we did of covering the glory or go watch part one of the glory. Otherwise, none of this is gonna make sense. But just to give you a very quick recap, in part one, we learned that Eve, the ringleader, is cheating on her husband with Jay and her daughter, Yezhor, is Jay's biological daughter. Richard is Eve's husband. And he's also learning that his perfect wife the weather forecaster is not the perfect wife that she tries to pretend to be. Her cracks are starting to show and he's realizing she was kind of a bully in high school. He doesn't know to what extent yet though. So mm -hmm. he's still kind of on his wife's side. Diana has told Ryan that she has information that Eve pushed a high schooler named Suhi off a building rooftop. We called her Susie in part one. But Ryan was confused because it was a closed case back then. So Suhi's falling off a building was categorized as a suicide. But Diana is now telling him that's not the case. Mm -hmm. So he decides, well, if Eve pushed Sohi off the building, I'm about to be a millionaire. I'm gonna blackmail Eve, get a bunch of money from my good old high school buddy, and fly to Moscow, Russia, and just fly under the radar. 
as a millionaire. So the whole friend group, they also find out that Diana is plotting her revenge. She's come after them and they start worrying about what Diana is doing. And then all of a sudden Ryan goes missing and it's a whole thing. The whole question is, where the f is Ryan? And the last episode of The Glory Part 1 ended with Eve and Richard both ending up at Diana's lair. Her apartment, her window is facing Eve's mansion. It's like the Joe Goldberg room, you know, the evidence of all the evidence, the stalking room. And there's a lot of questions. How is Eve going to handle seeing all these pictures, following her through the years for the past 20 years? How is she going to feel that knowing that Diana is coming for her marriage? And is Richard going to stay? Let's start with October 17th. Oh, also I'm making these um, strawberry cookies. Actually, they're called strawberry danish danishes. I don't know if that's even what they're called. <laughs> so you're gonna need, um, this is actually my mortal enemy. I hate this. I don't think I've ever had such deep fear <laughs> of something in my life. Hey, if you don't like me, the best way to get revenge is to fill my entire house with these, um, these, these bread canisters. I don't even know what to call them. Why do they all come like this? There's gotta be better packaging. Press spoon until it pops open. Ah! Sorry, uh. that's so dramatic. This is gonna send me into a premature cardiac arrest. What's wrong with these people? So anyway, we start off by going back to October 17th. This is when Ryan is still positively alive. October 17th, he had just walked out of the travel agency where he booked his one-way ticket to Moscow, Russia. He has a newfound skip in his step. He thinks he just found the best casual way to blackmail the evil Queen Eve, get money out of her by revealing that she pushed Sohi, a girl that they bullied in high school, off the abandoned building. And then afterwards, he's just gonna have fun. So after he gets out of the travel agency, he starts making his rounds of phone calls, getting ready to initiate the ultimate blackmail plan. So Ryan, he's kind of a ton muddy. You know what that is? So that's what we call it in Korean. It's where you only use your brain for bad stuff. Like you never use it for actual good. You just have a really manipulative way of thinking. So Ryan is trying to be a ton muddy and he's thinking, I don't want to just blackmail even get out of here. I can blackmail everybody for a little bit of money here, a little bit of money here, burn all my bridges, and then get the biggest shebang from Eve. So the first few calls are to Richard, Eve's husband, who he wasn't even friends with in high school. Richard is just this really massive business owner that married Eve because she's pretty and fits the pedigree of someone who would be his wife. I do think that they loved each other at one point. Maybe he still loves her. Anyway, mm. at this point in the storyline, Richard is suspecting that his wife is um, just kind of weird, right? Shady past. But he also suspects that something weird is going on with his daughter. Like Jay has at multiple points kind of hinted mm. at the fact that Yezhor is not Richard's biological daughter. And Jay is almost taunting him like, oh, I have a secret love child. Saying things like that just blatantly in his face. And Diana knows this because Jay has a genetic condition where he's colorblind. And Diana, being Yezhor's school teacher, knows that Yezhor is colorblind. Mm -hmm. Anyway, back to Ryan. He first calls Richard, but Richard doesn't pick up. He's confused why one of Eid's old high school friends would even be calling him. Then Ryan calls Sarah to ask if she has money to exchange into dollars. He said he's about to come into some money in Korean won, and he needs to exchange it into dollars. And Sarah, being the bitch that she is, she knows that Ryan is broke and says, what, you want to waste my time to exchange $4? I don't have time for your <laughs> Damn. <laughs> These people are so good. Who's so... friends? Who's enemy? I don't even know. <laughs> yeah. So what are these? Um, are these croissant These flakes? are crescent rolls. Ah. You don't know what that is, do you? Same. No. Neither do I. <laughs> they're like, I think they're like fake croissants. I think they're Americanized croissants. You just bake them and then you eat them like like bread. You know what, it's not cute, but it is my love for you. Mm. Anyway, we do see a shift in Ryan. You know, usually he's the type of friend that would take all of this, even though he acts like he's a tough guy because these are his money lines. These are his money trees, his friends. And he's finally progressing into the evil character that feels just as entitled as the rest of them. He feels like he no longer has to put up with their shit because he's about to come into some inheritance, into some money. He hits back at Sarah. Wow, Sarah, you really are a bitch, you know? A little bitch. She's like, what the f did you just say? No, that's probably right. You probably don't remember. Down on all fours, like a little bitch. Isn't that right? 
And so we have no idea what he's what? alluding to, but we will soon. This is very important. Remember this. Down on all fours like a little bitch. And then she's like, I don't know what you're talking about. And he says, you were there the night that Soe died, right? You ran without calling the cops. But you saw it, didn't you? You saw Soe fall from that building. She's like, what the, what the f*** are you on right now? Of course I didn't call the cops. I was probably f***ing high. I'm hanging up. I don't have time for your bullshit. Quit bothering me. And she hangs up, still so shameless. But Ryan, he's too busy to care. He gets a call from his former boss, Jay. Oh yeah, he's also ready to blackmail Jay in a sense, okay? Ryan has sent Jay pictures proving that Jay has been embezzling from his company. And Jay is trying to act dumb. What is the picture even about, Ryan? Why are you sending me this? Are you kidding, Jay? It's a record of your embezzlement, of course. You should know that already. The account book that shows where the money went instead of the golf course that you lied about in the Philippines. Look, we don't have to make this long, Jay. I'll be quick. I'll keep my mouth shut for some of your crypto. <laughs> What's a fair exchange, you think? Maybe for each page of that, one Bitcoin? <laughs> what? <laughs> and Jay is pissed, you son of a bitch. The market's already killing me, and you want what? Do you want to f***ing die? Wow, thanks for bringing up death. Remember the day that Sui died? You were Eve's alibi that day, weren't you? What the hell are you even saying? Why are you even bringing that up now? What's that got to do with anything? Oh, don't be f***ing dumb. I'll send you my crypto wallet address. You have 48 hours to send the Bitcoin. And you're not that tough, you know? F***ing shit face. And so you're that, telling me everyone trying to kill him now? Everyone's trying to kill Ryan now. Like, yeah. this guy is burning all his bridges with some really nasty, shady people. I don't know what this guy is thinking. Yeah. And with that, at this point, Ryan was inside of Jay's apartment wearing six fur coats stocked on top of each other because he's jacking it all before he leaves. And he, uh, <laughs> the guy walks out with, like, ten of Jay's watches on one wrist. And on the elevator, he's, uh, he makes one saving phone call to Mina. The poor one, the other poor oh, one of the group. Remember yeah, the one yeah, that's yeah. obsessed with being rich, the flight attendant? Yes. Now, remember, even back in the day, Eve, Sarah, and Jay, their parents are wealthy, their parents' parents are wealthy. Ryan and Mina are always the bottom of the social circle, the hierarchy. They're treated like some errand So he calls Mina and he says, Hey, you're cute, so I'm going to offer you a saving grace. Let's leave Korea together. Let's leave tomorrow. And why did you have to go to the school when Soi died that night? Huh? If you stay in Korea, you're going to become a suspect, too, for Sui's murder. So let's leave. Let's go to Russia. Mina's not taking Ryan seriously, because this guy has had a trillion plans, and none of them work out well. Does Ryan like Mina, or...? Just you wait. Mm. And she's like, why Russia? Oh my god, you finally decided to be a dog? A sled dog in Russia? Ryan's pissed. I'm trying to save you! Mina knew that both of them were broke, but she always thought herself to be a bit better than Ryan. And now that she's marrying a rich, sleazy, red flag guy, she feels even more powerful compared to Ryan. And Ryan's yelling, Shit, Mina, I'm trying to give you a first class ticket out of here. You're the only person that knows my apartment's passcode. Don't you see? I'm in love with you. So if you guys listen to part one, what? Mina told the group that Ryan's last phone call to her was Kim confessing his love for her. Uh -huh. And everyone made fun of her because they thought that she was lying. Uh -huh. She was not lying. Oh, Mina okay. screams and she hangs up the phone. And she said, oh, I have goosebumps. So gross. What's wrong with it? <laughs> <sighs> Yeah. <laughs> but it's interesting that she did not lie. So that's what's so going she, on. So is yes. she actually not into him at all? Or? Oh, yeah. She's not into him oh, at all. Damn. And uh, picking up where we left off with the rest of part one, that's kind of what we have on Ryan so far. We do get to see the wonderful married couple inside of Diane's lair where they come face to face yes. with Eve's dark past. Oh, yeah. The infamous scene. And the entire place is just filled with pictures of them over the years. Evidence of stalking, plotting, everything. I mean, it's so complicated. It's so intricate. I'm not even sure that Eve can stop it now that the revenge plot has been initiated. The door opens behind her, and she turns around expecting it to be Diana. But instead, it's her husband, Richard. And you would think that Eve would show a little bit of shame. She does not. Instead, she smirks. Honey, I didn't know that I should have brought you here with me. You should have told me. We could have just carpooled. 
Richard eyes the broken apartment door lock to Diana's place and makes a mental note that Eve has worn her shoes inside. So if you're a Westerner watching this, this is a seemingly innocuous little thing, right? But in Korean culture, wearing your shoes in someone else's house is like the ultimate sign of disrespect. <laughs> it's like your house is as dirty as the streets and you're like a dog. I don't need to take off my shoes here. But Eve continues. So honey, tell me, what are you doing here? Did Diana approach you with some sort of deal, an offer? Even if she did do that, why would you come here? What? You've been with me, so you want to know what it's like to be with a teacher now? What? And so Richard is like, okay, this girl is crazy. He says, you're the one that I'm curious about. And he looks around at all the pictures, and he says, you're the main character in all of this. So why you? Meaning, why is Diana after you? You know, what's going on? And we see a camera pan to the side of the apartment and there's like a little Nest camera pointed straight at them, watching them. Diana is watching. She's listening to Richard questioning his wife. And he says, I'll ask you this once. And if you don't answer me, I'm gonna go ask someone else. Did you bully someone so much that they tried to kill themselves? Did you verbally or physically abuse someone? Eve says, do you want to know? Do you really wanna know? Did Miss Moon, did Diana do anything to deserve that? Oh, did she have to do anything? What did you just say? The idea that I bullied her is just some story. It's just that we didn't get along back then. I'm gonna go now. So look all you want. And Eve drops her cigarette on Diana's floor and squashes it out with her high-heeled shoes on Diana's floor in her living room, right next to her bed. I mean, it's the disrespect. It's gonna catch on fire. The disrespect. Yeah. Then she walks toward the door where Richard is standing, gets in his face and says, Honey, today you're the one that disappointed me and not the other way around. And she walks off. Richard is flabbergasted. Okay, the mental cartwheels his wife is doing. He walks into the apartment, now completely alone, and he studies the pictures. He sees pictures of Jay trying to talk to his daughter Yezhor at school, and that pisses him off. And the one thing that Diana notices while she snoops on him through the camera is that he had taken off his shoes. When they were in high school, the bullies came into her tiny little apartment to torture her as a sign of disrespect. They all kept their shoes on. Richard had taken off his shoes when he entered. And things, you know, sometimes yeah. like it's just habits. <laughs> like, I, I, I can't, I can't keep it on, even if I want to. He's like, I want to disrespect you, but it's a habit. Yeah. I'm like habitually respectful. <laughs> and things have really taken off since Ryan vanished. The police are now investigating because Mina was forced by Diana to report him missing. Do you remember that? Uh -huh, remember, uh -huh. Mina was on her knees because Diana is best buds with her new fiance's mother. The money bag's mom of Mina's hus future fiance. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Yeah. And so now the police are investigating, and we see Sarah freaking out. She's going through drug withdrawals, she's itching, she's eating everything in sight, and it's further adding to her stress and panic, and she thinks maybe murder is better than being caught for drugs. That's what she tells her friends. Because you can say that you accidentally murdered someone, but you can't say you accidentally took drugs, right? Jay is nowhere near as panicked. He's as cocky as ever. He actually welcomes the cops to his little boutique, his clothing boutique, and he lets them know straight up, I don't really have time for this. I'm kind of a busy guy. <laughs> um, I'm Detective Choi. Here's my card. Okay, and do you usually investigate missing adults? It's no longer just a missing persons case, uh, Mr. Chung. It's a criminal case. It seems that Mr. Son, your friend Ryan, may have been involved in narcotics. Do you remember the last time that you saw Ryan? Not sure, he hasn't been to work in three weeks now. He, he stopped coming to work, and that didn't concern you. Honestly, he stopped coming in as right as I was about to fire him. Such a fucking shit employee. It's hard to fire someone nowadays, you know? Mm, correct. Uh, do you know anything else that might be helpful? Did he meet someone around that night? Brilliance strikes Jay's peanut brain in that moment, and he sits up. You know, <clears throat> Detective Choi, now that you mention it, around the time that he went missing, there was someone desperately looking around for him. The JY Construction Group founder, Richard Ha. He even uh, gave me his business card and he kind of had this mad look on his face when he was talking about Ryan and looking for him. It's kind of scary. I wonder why. 
Of course, hearing that, the police are going to want to talk to Richard next. And he's already wrapped up in this whole thing now with his wife and all her high school secrets being exposed. His assistant tells him that the police want to interview him for Ryan's disappearance. Disappearance? Yes, and Ryan, before he disappeared, sir, he dropped this off and wanted me to give this to you. I'm sorry. And the assistant runs out of the room. She had placed a USB on the table and he puts it into his computer and he listens to it on his way home. And I guess he had Bluetoothed it to his car. And it's, it's Ryan's voice talking to Richard's assistant. And he's sing-songing, Miss Secretary, I have information on the motherfucker that's been fucking your boss's wife. So tell your boss, if he doesn't want to see this guy's name plastered all over the internet, he should call me soon. So we find out that Ryan, remember how he had called Richard but Richard didn't pick up? Yeah. He was blackmailing Richard to pay him money so that he wouldn't be publicly humiliated for being cheated on by his wife. Bro. Yeah. What a pea brain. Yeah, what a pea brain. But Eve is still the ever charismatic weather girl on camera because Ryan didn't have time to expose her cheating antics to the media. Just all smiles, all wholesomes, all rain or sunshine. But right when the cameras turn off, she's like the queen of the station. She's walking out while her assistant is holding all of her clothes. Now, we talked about this in part one, but the assistant is very interesting. There's something going on. She looks at Eve with this, I don't know, there's a suspicious look and it's confirmed in this scene because the assistant, her shirt lifts up a little bit and she's got the same scars as Diana. And every Ooh. time she sees Diana, she has like a weird look on her face when she looks at Diana, the assistant. I don't know. We're going to get to it. Yeah, so right. as they're walking out of Eve's workplace, Diana walks in. Okay. Oh yeah, she waltzes in. Eve has no idea if there's a connection between Diana and her assistant. Like, mm -hmm. no clue. Mm -hmm. And Eve and Diana haven't seen each other since, well, Eve broke into her home and put the cigarette out on the floor. Uh -huh. So Diana's like, Eve, you should have just asked to visit. That lock was expensive to replace. Good. It was even more expensive to open it. So they sit, and Diana's like, do you want coffee? Come on. They go and sit down at the coffee shop in the lobby of Eve's workplace. And Eve starts. Diana, I really love seeing your home. You must have worked hard working at the factory, passing exams, teaching. But you haven't upgraded your living. Must have been rough. I see that you've done your research. Huh. <laughs> this bitch. You're the one to talk? Just shut up already, Diana. If you're really after revenge, you would have gone to the police already. All you're doing is rambling because you have no evidence, no proof of any wrongdoing. So try your best, Diana. Cut the bullshit. You don't ever listen, do you, Eve? I said I've been busy. You see, I posted this online, but it didn't get many views, maybe because it lacked a subject, a name. And she puts her phone down on the computer to show Eve breaking into her house. And Eve smirks. Post it. Make sure to include my name. Whatever it is, I have a million ways to explain it away. Really? But could you escape this too then? And Diana places a stack of reports along with high school pictures of her with her scars all over her arms. This is the ex-nurse of the school that had taken pictures and taken the report and she had been fired the next day. Mm -hmm. Diana was able to find her and she still had copies of everything. Wow. Eve crumbles up the papers, because I'm assuming these are copies, and she says, You do that, Diana. You post this, and I promise I will kill you. Wake up already, Eve. I should be the one killing you, you selfish b I changed my mind a hundred times on whether I should come or not today, but I decided to do it. The reason that I'm coming to visit you today is to give you an opportunity for one last chance, and I'm giving it to you because of the a gesture of kindness left at my door by somebody else. Richard taking off his shoes. Wow. Eve isn't having it. <laughs> what the hell are you saying? You go turn yourself in. Take these, give them to the police. Confess everything you did and everything you did in order to cover up the crimes that you've committed. Do what now? If your punishment comes from me, it'll be a lot harsher, Eve. I promise I'll pay you back for the 18 years of hell. You're gonna have to beg me for forgiveness and all your other victims by turning yourself in. Then, and only then, will I put a stop to my revenge. <laughs> wow, how nice of you, Diana. And why would I do that? How would it just stop there, Diana? As soon as I go to the police, it'll be on the news and then it will be all over. Are you trying to be smart? 
or something? And I think you misunderstood something. I didn't do anything wrong, Diana. Really? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing! So you think that I made your life a living hell? That's just wrong, Diana. Your life has been a hell since the very moment that you were born. Honestly, you should be thanking me. Because of me, you teach. What's wrong with being the reason that helped turn your life around? And forgiveness? Who forgives who? Why do the poor always believe in things like justice and karma? Even if I have to pull you apart, I promise I will find another curling iron to use on you. Wow. So get lost. Oh my god. Diana just smiles. I should thank you. Our meeting here has completely erased all my guilt. Actually, I think it's nice to see you like this. That expression on your face tells me that you're struggling, Eve. So good luck. This was your last chance and you threw it away. It was a lifeline that your husband had gotten you. And Diana walks off. We see her going to David's place to sleep because, well, she very well can't sleep at her place now. That's like a war zone for Eve. She could be ambushed in the middle of the night. Her window could break, tear gas could be thrown in. I don't know. So she walks into the living room to see David setting up a cute little tent, which is actually kind of cute. Apparently, Diana ordered it because she wanted to sleep there instead of his guest room to take up less space. It's kind of cute. It's weird. And she passes him roasted sweet potatoes. David is the doctor that's helping her with the revenge. Here, let's eat. Wow, koguma, these are my favorite. <laughs> what? You said noodles were your favorite. Wow, koguma, my second favorite. <laughs> so David is like completely whipped by Diana. Literally will worship the ground that she walks on for his own reasons. And I'm gonna tell you, Part one, I was team Richard. I was like, I want Diana and Richard to get together because it's hot, it's sexy, it's also the ultimate revenge against Eve. But then David starts growing on me. Really? Yeah. David didn't turn evil like we predicted? No. What? Literally, we're like, yeah. David is gonna flip. No. So he glue up. He glue up. And he's like, welcome home, Diana. And she takes a peek inside the tent where he set it up super cute with like the camping string lights and a little welcome home sign. Oh, that's like our day night yeah, idea. Yeah, it's so cute. And he even sets up a cute little bonfire outside to roast s'mores together. And, um, you know, he said, I, I bought a house with a yard just so I could do stuff like this. He bought a house? Yeah, the, he, this is, it's a massive house. It's insane. The guy is rich. His parents own like a hospital, you know, mm. a massive hospital in Seoul. He's mm. a Nepo baby. Anyway, Diana's like, by the way, David, I can pay my share in electricity bills, but I'm not going to pay half. This place is too big. If I end up paying half, I'm going to turn off all the heating electricity. All I think about when I see your house is all the money that it takes to run it. <laughs> it's weird. And they smile and they try to be romantic, but it's too much for Diana. So she tells him that she has a fever and she has to go back in. It's obviously a lie, but he gets up right behind her and in the K-drama slow-mo music, puts his hand on her forehead from behind her and checks her temperature. And he says, in my professional medical opinion, Diana, you're faking it. <laughs> it's really cute. It's really cute. They're having a glow up. It's a romantic moment compared to the anger that Richard feels when he goes home to his wife. He's angrily undressing like the CEO that he is. They always have to have that angry tie loosening scene in the closet. You know what I mean? He's doing his little moment when he spots all the shopping bags in his wife's closet. So all the shopping bags, meaning like, you know, when you buy some luxury items, a lot of people keep the shopping bags and they display them. We've all done that before. Yeah, well, these are not the typical shopping bags that people display. They're like a random boutique and they're all the same one. They're all from Jay's clothing shop, every single f***ing one of them. Eve is being so blatant with her cheating, not that she's even home to try and save her marriage, but it's just pissing Richard off at this point. <sighs> yeah, Eve is too busy trying to calm Sarah down, who's freaking out. Sarah calls a group meeting in her little house without Ryan. She's freaking out. All right, now I'm mixing some cream cheese, flour, and sugar to make like a little, I'm not sure what I'm making, but I'm making something. And you know what? I think this is going to be freaking delicious either way. And I'm only making four because I think it's about quality. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, this is not gonna be the same thing. I think a unique kind of stress is uh, setting these financial goals for your future 
but they feel so out of reach. It's not that unique, but it, it's a special kind of stress is what I'm trying to say. But your financial goals don't have to feel out of reach. With Chime Secured Credit Builder Visa Credit Card, you can start building credit with your own money through on-time payments and small everyday purchases like groceries, streaming, gas bills. Members can see an increase of 30 points to their credit scores on average, and Chime reports your payments to the major credit bureaus to help you build credit over time. All of this with no annual fees, large security deposits, or credit checks to apply. So start making your financial dreams a reality with Chime. Signing up only takes two minutes and doesn't affect your credit score. Get started at Chime.com slash baking. That's Chime.com slash baking. The Chime Credit Builder Visa Credit Card is issued by Stride Bank NA pursuant to a license from Visa USA. Chime checking account and $200 qualifying direct deposit required to apply for the secured Chime Credit Builder Visa Credit Card. Based on a study conducted by Experian, Credit Builder members observed an average of 30 points. FICO score 8 increased after 8 months with regular on-time payments. Results may vary. See Chime.com for details. Details. Out of network ATM withdrawal fees may apply, except at Money Pass ATMs in a 7 Eleven or any All Point or Visa Plus Alliance ATM. And Sarah is freaking out. Drugs is now part of the investigation for Ryan's disappearance? I mean, fuck me! I knew this would fucking happen. And she runs over to Mina, who called the cops. Remember, Mina called? And uh, she grabs Mina by the hair and starts shaking her head. This is all your fault because you reported I'm missing you fucking bitch. Ow, my hair, let go of my hair, let go. Well, maybe you shouldn't have become a fucking drug addict in the first place, it's not my fault. Get off of me. Jay breaks up the fight and Eve is standing there emotionless. Eve slaps papers down on the table. It's her reports of bullying uh, Diana. Guys, we can't break right now. Diana is coming for us, after all of us. Sarah reads the nurse's reports. How is this any of my problem, Eve? You're the only one who's going to be affected by this scandal. I don't give a shit about any of this, and I'm only asking because it's bothering me. But did Ryan ask any of you guys about Tohi, the girl that died in high school? They all glance around. Mina speaks up first. He asked me why, he went to, why we went to Tohi's school the day that she died. I almost told him that Eve was the one that asked me to go with her. Eve smirks. What are you trying to imply, Mina? I spent the entire day with Jay back then, right? We were all unfairly investigated for Sui's death. Haven't we all agreed on that? So then it's we now, Eve? The group is falling apart. Everyone is out for themselves and none of them are scared of Eve anymore, it's mean, it seems. Even Jay, he's prioritizing getting custody of his daughter rather than getting with Eve. And his lawyer had told him the best solutions are for Eve and Richard getting a divorce or going to prison for Jay to fight for custody. So he asks Eve, remind me again where that was? That we were hanging out that day? We were in the movie room watching some nasty movies together, remember? Oh, huh. I guess we were like that, huh? Sarah laughs. You expect us to believe that? Nobody wants to say it? Fine, I will. We all know that you're the one that did something to Toy Eve. Sara, I think you should just shut up now. Be careful. And we get a flashback of Eve not only pushing Toy off the building, but lighting her on fire first. Eve in high school had lit Toy's shirt on fire and then pushed <laughs> her off the building. So full on murder, not yeah. even accident, just murder. Yeah. And now she's laughing in front of her friends, maniacally. This is her evil, crazy laugh. <laughs> you all have really lost it now, haven't you? Go screw yourselves. But this is not something that's going to go away. I mean, Diana reveals that she has Hoi's old incident report, all the documents that ruled her death as and we get a flashback to when she was approached by Hoi's mom, who is deaf, and she's begging Diana, trying to communicate with her to read the incident report to help her. She cries that nobody's listening to her. She even drops to her knees begging Diana to listen and help her. It's heartbreaking. Meanwhile, when was this? This is a flashback or? This is recent? like when Diana was in college. So this is um, after high school. Like for years, Hui's mom has been doing this, mm. trying to get justice for her daughter. Oh, so they finally connected. Yeah. Mm. And meanwhile, in current time, David is able to use his status as the hospital director's son to get the autopsy reports for Hui's death. It was performed at the hospital that's run by his family, basically owned by his family, um, Jew General Hospital in Seoul. It reveals that Hui was eight weeks pregnant at the time of her murder. What? 
And that indicates that she was probably raped during her bullying. Oh my gosh. Diana tells the old nurse from the school that helped her and tried to help Zoe before it was too late that she's one of the good ones. And Diana tells her, I'm gonna bring Zoe back home. I'm doing all of this, this whole revenge, I'm avenging her. I think that's maybe why I'm still alive sometimes, to get her justice. I feel like any time I wanted to die, Zoe was there helping me. And because of her, I feel strong. And speaking of avenging Zoe's death, we get a flashback to the last phone call Ryan made before his disappearance. And he already called Richard, Mina, Jay, Sarah, and now Eve. She's out to dinner with friends when she walks away to pick up. I've been thinking about you, Eve. You wanna meet up later? There's something I really need to talk to you about. If you don't meet with me today, I'll just come meet you at work tomorrow. Now I'm curious, Ryan. I'm with my friends, but I can't meet now. How about 11 at Siesta? That's the boutique that Jay runs. So Detective Choi is investigating Ryan's disappearance, right? But he's not only investigating his best friends, but also Diana. And she's shockingly transparent with him, even though she has a bad taste in her mouth from the cops. She tells him straight up, she's the one that told Ryan about Tui, and she was the one using him to get the other friends to confess. And so the officer is like, where did you want Ryan to go? To Eve. Okay, so you're just repeating yourself this entire time. You think the weather reporter, Eve, is somehow involved in Ryan's disappearance? But you have no evidence to support this claim. Am I getting that right? This police officer is a letdown. Come on, they always have to. Yeah, character they're always development. Gonna be drunk and, uh, yeah. <laughs> and so Diana's like, I have to give you the proof too after I turn in this report. Look, 99% of reports like these are lies. Defamation is a very serious crime, ma'am. Now, all I want to know is did Ryan have something to do with drugs? I'll think about it, officer. All I want to know is do you know something or not? What is there to think about? I don't know if this is defamation or not, so I will think about it. After all, I shouldn't commit such a serious crime, officer. <laughs> what? I love her. <laughs> but remember her friend slash accomplice in the revenge plot, Helen? The one with the abusive husband? That Helen the maid? Mm-hmm, mm -hmm, yes. Yes, she's running to comfort her daughter who's been beaten by her abusive father, Helen's husband. When Helen sees the scars on her daughter Sunny's face, she tries to comfort her and she's like, I'm gonna go kill him and her daughter stops her. There's no point, he'll just beat you up if you go in there, there's no point. He bought himself four bottles of soju. He's not gonna fall asleep anytime soon. So the two of them, they sit outside and Helen tries to wipe the, the blood off of her daughter's face, but Sunny is the one that tries to comfort her. And Helen says, Sunny, how are you so bright and beautiful, even if you grew up in a place so awful? And they sit there together, and it's just so sad. Sunny starts comforting her mom when it really should be the other way around. But she says, don't worry, mom. None of this is your fault. You're doing the best you can every day. Sunny, do you want to go away somewhere? Far from here? To study? Uh, my tutor, Diana, your friend, was mentioning the United States. But that's not that far, right? It's not like I'll be walking there. You promise you'll come join me soon? So Diana blackmailed Seda into giving her a duffel bag of US dollars, like just filled to the brim with cash. And we thought that she was gonna use it to fund her revenge plot, mm -hmm. but of course she's not. She's using it to fund for Sunny's life in America to study abroad, get away from her abusive father. How old is Sunny? Middle school. Um, Yes, Sunny, you can go there first, and Diana and I will follow you there. You can go to school there, start cheerleading, maybe even date a football player. Mom, what kind of US movies are you watching? <laughs> <laughs> the two sit there before Helen goes back to meet with Diana at their usual spot, but right when she parks, instead of Diana tapping on her window, she's face to face with Eve. She slowly w lowers her window. May I help you, ma'am? Get out, Ajma. I think you have the wrong person. I don't think I do. Helen Kang, right? Knock it off and get out now. And we see Eve hold up a picture of Helen's husband. She had stolen it from Diana's apartment and she's gonna try and turn Helen against Diana. Helen gets out and is standing in front of Eve. Your neighbors say you get beaten up all the time from your husband. I was expecting you to look way worse. Anyway, at Diana's apartment, I saw all sorts of pictures there. Almost every single one of them, I knew everyone, except for this one. 
and then know this gentleman right here. Do you have nothing to say now? How did you find me? Wasn't hard, Helen. We see Eve's PI had discovered Diana has two cars registered to her name. She drives one, someone else must drive the other, someone that she's working with. Eve realized there's no way that Diana took all these pictures on her wall, like that's a full-time job. There's no way. So whoever is driving the other car must be the one helping her. Fine, Eve. Just say it already. Just tell me what you want. If you happen to breathe a single word of this to my husband, I'll make you regret it. <laughs> and how would you do that, Helen? I'd be more than happy to talk to your husband too, Eve. And Eve laughs this evil laugh. Oh my god, you stupid bitch. Just shut up. Listen, I'm going to say something that you're going to find interesting. Your daughter, first year middle school, class three, Sunny, right? Helen looks horrified. What, so you're allowed to take pictures of my daughter, but I can't do any research on yours? And she slaps Helen across the face. What the f***? You can go to my daughter's school and take pictures, but I can't say your daughter's name? And she smacks her again. Maybe this conversation can get somewhere if I drag your daughter here, Helen. Helen starts changing her attitude. I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, man. Please, just not my daughter, not her, please. And Eve smiles. So you understand me now, right? You should have had a different attitude, no? I'm a lot tougher than you are. Eve grabs Helen's bag and dumps everything on the ground. And she starts calling Helen's phone. I'm calling you, so make sure you save my number. But when the phone rings, it's on the ground, and they can both see it. Helen already has her number saved as evil bitch that'll end up in a ditch. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like you already have it. Pick it up. Helen is leaning down to grab it, and Eve stomps on her hand with her heels. This is like high school bully, man. Like, yeah, I mean, I guess you're too you old for this. Exactly, exactly. It's a bit weird, isn't it? An elementary school teacher, an ex-maid, what could they have in common? And she squishes harder on her hand. I get it now. You want to kill your husband. Diana wants to kill me. And you want to kill your husband. Both of you want to kill someone. Then let me make you the same offer, the same deal that Diana probably made you. Help me, and I can kill your husband faster than Diana ever could. I could kill him tomorrow. You could bury him the next day. Or maybe I could just pay you instead. But you have to do whatever I say. What do you say? Helen looks up at Eve, and I think it's clear she's going to say yes. Because when Diana shows up to meet with Helen, the car is no longer at the meeting spot. Helen's busy. She's rushing her daughter into a car that she had no idea existed. Her daughter is like, you drive, Emma? Where did you get this car? Because remember, Diana taught her to drive. Uh -huh. Helen is moving Sunny to safety, not picking up any of Diana's phone calls. Eve is busy, just making moves. Her next little evil plan, this woman is so evil, is she targets Diana's mom again. So remember Diana's mom was paid by Eve's mom to withdraw Diana from the school in high school? And yeah. left her with nothing completely broken, just broke? Yeah. Well now Eve is showing up offering Diana's mom money in order to get Diana fired from her school. Now. It's very different the way that it works in Korea versus the United States. In Korea, if your family members come causing a ruckus at your school, you'll most likely be forced to resign, especially at a very stuffy private school like this one. It's not like America where everyone's like, oh my God, family trauma, we totally understand, like we're gonna protect you. In Korea, it's like, don't bring your business here, you're f fired. Yeah, and her, Diana's mom doesn't even think twice. She doesn't give a about her daughter. In fact, all she wants is money. She's been living a really bad life and she thinks that Diana can help her out. So of course, she's not going to hesitate one bit when it comes to ruining Diana's life for a second time for some cold hard cash. Diana escorts her mom to her apartment because Diana's mom is already at the parking lot of the school causing a ruckus. Diana drags her to a lair filled with pictures and she's pissed. Her mom is looking around. Oh, sweetie, this is... Grim, I can help you put up some wallpaper if you need to, you know, make it feel more homey. Diana had taken down all the pictures at this point of the revenge. How did you find me here, huh? How? How can you teach your students when you don't even treat your mother so well? Yelling at me? When did you move here, Diana? I came here last spring and the landlord said that nobody was living here. You came here? Last spring? Of course, sweetie. I'm your mommy after all. Blood is thicker than water, you see? Oh, it's so cute. Here you go. Thank you. Okay, wow. shall we try it? Yes. 
Tschüss, Ade. So good. Yum. Oh. It works, the little cream. What the heck? Wow, I thought for sure this was going to be a fail. Mm-hmm, me too. Mmm. <laughs> wow, mm. so good. Good job. Love mm them. -hmm. Oh, I should have made more. Mm-hmm. Wow. Mmm. <laughs> okay. And her mom tells her, Oh, and try and hide if you like, but I'll find you again. Diana is shocked. She says to herself, You did it, Eve. You did it. You found two new irons to use against me. Mm -hmm. mm. And for the first time in part two, we see Diana truly shaken up by the appearance of her mother. But Diana has her own little plot in the works. She has forced Mina to ask Eve to show up at a plastic surgery clinic where Mina, Mina is getting a consultation by a doctor. The doctor, David. Eve oh. walks in super confused. Oh, sorry, doctor. This is my friend Eve. Do you mind if she stays during the procedure? I'm getting filler. I guess I can't turn away free advertising, Mina. We're doing a buy one, get one event, Eve, so please let us know if you'd like a procedure too. Eve smirks. I believe everything is worth what you pay for. Mina, why did you call me here? And what about Diana? I wanted you to hear from me first, Eve. Don't freak out, because this is the truth. Diana and your husband have been playing Go together. Have they now? In the back, a nurse knocks Mina's purse off the ground. It's an Hermes Kelly pochette. Oh yeah, very expensive bag. And Mina shoots up out of her chair. What the hell? Do you know how much that's worth? What if you scratched it? Eve smirks, grabs the purse from the nurse's hands, and throws it on Mina. Why buy a bag that you can't even afford, Mina? Just buy a tote next time. Now finish what you were saying about Diana and my husband. You don't have the right to say that my bag is fine. You think I stole this from the laundry mat like that dress I stole? I didn't. A rich man gave this to me as a present. <laughs> <laughs> she didn't even say I worked for it. Yeah. Don't take it the wrong way. I was just thinking for your finances. You seem a little bit touchy today, so I'm going to get going, Mina. You're right. It's me starting my period. That's why I didn't fuck your husband the other night. He was so disappointed. And Eve turns around. What? What are you even talking about? Mina holds up her purse. Remember, she did met up, meet up with Richard and he bought her an Hermes bag. Oh. And he didn't want to fuck her. He just wanted to ask, is my wife a bully? <laughs> oh, so Mina's implying your husband bought me this bag. Yeah. And Mina says, the man who bought me this was your husband, Eve. And it was your husband that told me that he plays Go with Diana. It's a small fucking world, right? Did you meet up with my husband? Yeah, and he bought this with him too. I should have told him everything about you, but because we're friends, I stopped myself. Mina walks out, but before she goes, she turns to Eve and says, maybe you should book an appointment too, so your husband won't have to call me next time. Wait, 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 wait. why like, is she so aggressive? Because Eve is so mean to her. And all of a sudden she just snaps? Mina has always been a power tripper. Like, she wants Eve's life. Mm. And when she finally finds a little soft spot in Eve, she wants to dig in. Like, she's one of those friends that secretly wants Eve's life to crumble. Mm. She wants to see Eve fall. So she thought, this is the opportunity mm -hmm. right now. Yeah, and now it's just awkward. And it's just David and Eve standing there. <laughs> and David asks Eve before she leaves if she would like a procedure too. But she acts all high and mighty before walking ra right out. And she tells him, she'll come back if it rains. But it won't rain anytime soon. I don't know if she's being literal because she's a weather girl or if she's using it as a, a metaphor, but she laughs in his face and walks off. It feels like a true power struggle now. Eve getting Helen and Diana's mom, Diana going for Eve's confidence at, at a plastic surgery clinic. I don't know what Diana's game is here, but she gets a phone call that night from Helen and she rushes to meet her. Diana, you were exactly right. Eve did come to find me. And we get a flashback to before Helen had that fateful meeting with Eve, Diana told her while Helen was about to park her car that a picture of her husband was missing. Eve probably discovered that the two of them were working together. And Helen said, I don't want you to misunderstand what I was doing. I don't want you to think that I switched sides and I was working for her. I had to turn my phone off so that I could make sure that Sunny was safe. Have you had a chance to eat yet, Helen? Yes. And please take care of my Sunny. 
and she glances over at the car. Don't worry about Sunny. I'll take care of her. Yes, and I have to turn my phone back on. So I'm back on Eve's radar. From now on, Eve is my new boss. You got that, Miss Diana? And the two of them bust out laughing before Diana takes Sunny away to stay at the ex-nurse's house until oh. Sunny can get to America safely. Oh, okay. Because Eve knows where Helen lives and, you know, we wouldn't put it past Eve to not mess with Helen's daughter. Yeah. And Sunny is stressed. My dad is going to kill my mom if I'm gone. He said if we ever try to run away, he would kill my grandma, my aunt, and my mom. That's never going to happen, Sunny, I promise you. Just trust your mother and wait. The only thing I know is that your mother is doing everything she can for you. And she tells Sunny, the life that we live can be very cruel. This is why you have to study abroad. Go and study as hard as you can. And when you're not studying, go to an art museum. Eat something good, eat something yummy, have fun, see the world. The only way you can prove how brave you are is by leaving. When they share this emotional moment before the nurse starts making Sunny dinner. But we see that Richard is busy too at investigating. He goes to Jay's shop to try on a suit. Not really, mainly just to check it out. And the assistant already knows exactly who he is and what he's there for. He's led to the back where Eve can have easily... Oh, by the way, the assistant that works at Jay's shop is also, um, what you call it? Eve's assistant. The one that has a weird emotional connection with Diana later. So she's, she looks like a little spy, basically. Yeah. Basically, she got like two jobs. Uh, working on... What? This mm -hmm. girl's everywhere. <laughs> huh. So she's giving a, also like a little revenge vibe. Because yeah. she was bullied, correct? Mm -hmm. And he's led to the back where the fitting rooms are, and there's a couch in there. Multiple couches, and a coffee table, and a bar, a whole espresso machine set up. Where Eve was probably hooking up with Jay. Yes. Side note, uh, this, this assistant would later tell Jay that Richard stopped by, and of course Jay is going to want to see the security footage. And that's when something very, very strange is brought to his attention. October 19th, the day that Ryan went missing, Eve demanded the assistant delete all the video security files from before. So there's nothing before October 19th or the day of October 19th. Why? That's what Jay wants to know. But that's his store. Mm -hmm. The assistant just listened to the other girl? Yeah, because Eve, like, Jay is Eve's little bitch this whole okay. time. When Richard comes home, it's tense in the house with Eve. She's upset that he met up with Mina and gave her an Hermes bag. He's upset that she's f***ing her high school boyfriend. And Eve confronts him. Did you go and meet up with Mina? Why? Why? You're starting to scare me, honey. I'm just trying to have a calm conversation. The past is in the past. The future is what's ahead. I don't have any other options. I'm not so sure about that. I looked into your other options. Why did you have to talk to Mina? Why did it have to be Mina? So this conversation feels like Richard knows Eve's, Eve is cheating. She knows that he knows, but is more pissed off at the fact that he, Richard went to Mina, making her marriage seem weak in front of Mina, her ultimate front of me. And Eve smiles. What did Mina say when you asked if I had other options? Who else was I supposed to ask, Eve? Sarah's too busy ruining her life with drugs. Should I have asked Jay? Or maybe Ryan, who disappeared? Or your mother, who's been giving some shaman hundreds of thousands of dollars? Oh, what? Yeah, her mom's obsessed with a shaman. This shaman is going to become very important later. You're, you're really doing all of this? You're really going to take their side? Richard punches the wall. Um, kind of a red flag moment, but you know what? When you find out that your wife is kind of a liar and like lied about your whole life and your daughter might not be your biological daughter, fine, you get one wall pass. That's it. He says, if I'm taking sides, it's going to be yes or sides. Our daughters. If you've ever felt the slightest bit of guilt for me or even your daughter, then you shouldn't have said anything. Nothing. You should have waited. But clearly, you don't feel any guilt at all. Clearly. Honestly, I'm not sure what he's asking right now. <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you. I think he's just mad about the way that she's handling the situation. Okay. Yeah. And he goes back to his office in anger. And he starts thinking while he's staring at his office window. It's giving rich CEO and K-drama moment. And he remembers Ryan's business card. Along with a picture of him and Diana at the convenience store. And he puts two and two together. Diana wanted Richard to find Ryan. Ryan didn't send this. Diana sent this. Wait, I, f I don't follow. Because 
Remember, Ryan had called the secretary and his blackmail to Richard was, I'm going to release that your wife is fucking someone else. Mm -hmm. But he originally thought this anonymous letter with Ryan's business card and a picture of him, looks like a stalker photo, of him mm -hmm. staring out the convenience store window watching Diana walk away. Mm -hmm. He thought that was Ryan blackmailing him. Mm -hmm. But these are two different sets of information. One is Richard looking at Diana and Ryan's voice is telling his secretary, mm. I'm going to release that, you know, Richard's wife is f***ing someone else. Mm -hmm. So Richard is like, oh my God, Ryan did not send this picture okay. of me at the convenience store. Diana did. Diana wants Richard to investigate Ryan. Mm. Why? Also, side note about this picture. Um, I saw a TikTok theory about this and I thought this was interesting, but this picture is the most annoying picture for Eve if she ever found it because Richard had told Eve first episode in part one that he is with Eve. He married Eve out of all the girls he could have married because she was the one wearing the least amount of clothing on their first date. But when you look at this picture, Diana is covered from wrist to ankle, to, like turtleneck and everything. And he's fucking captivated, like cannot take his eyes off this woman. Eve has always been jealous of Diana. Even after disfiguring her whole body, she had asked Jay in high school, but do you think her face is prettier than mine? And she kept asking about Diana. So meanwhile, Eve goes to the plastic surgery clinic because yeah, she is feeling insecure after this fight with Richard. And she goes in to get a small procedure done. <laughs> yeah. From David? From David. Oh my God. And she asks him, do you have a girlfriend? Probably a few, huh? I do have a girlfriend. She's incredibly clever and pretty, but she can also act pretty cold sometimes. So you're dating a mean girl then. Wait, so David knows who she is? Oh yeah. Okay. Let me ask you then. How much can guys usually forgive? Assuming the girl's done bad things. I'm not sure what you're asking. Uh, I guess I can say guys don't usually want to marry women who have had plastic surgery, but they won't care what work you've done as long as they don't know about it. So he's, they're talking in euphemisms, you know, yeah. or like metaphors. But what if he already found out? Then I think you should just get filler. You'll be able to keep your beauty, but it'll disappear over time. That way you can just keep playing dumb until he learns the truth. I didn't know fillers could be so romantic. I guess I'll have to see if you're right. I'll need you to put me under though. I'm afraid of needles. Mm. I, I need to see how the filler will react before we put you under. It's okay. I know you're good. I just don't like how it feels. Uh, okay, fine. And the nurse, side note, remember the ex-school nurse that got fired that's now protecting Sunny? I don't know if I mentioned, but she's working for Dr. David. Jeez, everyone's like undercover somehow. Yeah, everyone's undercover. Everyone's connected all by Diana. So she's drugging up Eve for this procedure and she knows who Eve is. Eve doesn't know who she is. She's wearing a full mask. It's just the nurse and Dr. David in the room with Eve and she instructs Eve to start counting backwards from 10. Meanwhile, Richard goes to meet with Diana at a hotel restaurant. They get into an elevator together and he says, I heard about the two of you, Eve and Diana he's talking about. Then you probably didn't hear everything, Richard. They get out to the restaurant and they're greeted with coat check. Diana for the first time wore short sleeves under her coat. Oh my gosh. And she takes off her coat to check it. And Richard is shocked, like positively shocked. Everyone around them is petrified too. They sit down for dinner and he can't stop staring at her scars. And he says, I had so many questions. I guess they're pointless now. Do those scars still cause you pain? Don't ask me that. I don't want to hear lame questions. Even if this is all pointless, there's more important things for you to ask. Like, did Eve do it? So did you look for Ryan? I even sent you a picture. Is there anything else I need to know, Diana? You know enough to leave Eve. What else do you need to hear? Listen, to be transparent, I want everyone in her life to leave her, including you. Why? Because you are Eve's glory. Don't you agree? But after all this, I want you to become another reminder of her ruin, of her downfall. With a plan like this, I'm surprised you weren't more proactive, Diana. You weren't that aggressive. I'm not gonna leave her. Why not? I don't know. I don't like admitting that I don't know either. I only realize now that I'm not leaving her. So. I guess this means we'll meet again. Wait, why? I don't know. Maybe mm. for the kid. I don't know. Maybe for his image. I think it's for his image. Mm. Because um, 
shit starts going down soon. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, Eve goes under and is being counted down to sleep when David leans over and asks, what did you do to Ryan? <laughs> what? Yeah. Is she out or no? She's like almost out. She's in a daze and she goes, what? And her eyes widen, but we can imagine she told David what happened, and we can imagine that he probably recorded it. She met oh, up with Oh, so yeah. he utilized the, this. Yes. Uh, okay. And she she reveals that she met up with Ryan at Jay's clothing store in the back, alone. She knows that Ryan is recording his phone with his phone. It's on the coffee table, face down. And Eve says, "You have one minute, Ryan. You said you wanted to talk, so talk." Wow, Eve, you really haven't changed. Listen closely. You know that bastard Jay? I fucking did everything for him. I drove him, I kept him company, I acted like his friend. You probably know, I didn't go to college. But I basically did, I signed his attendance. So it really hurts my pride just to be called his driver. Get on with it, you're pissing me off. Yeah, piss, that's exactly how I feel. If I were Jay, I would have spent all my time using you to become a director at JY Construction instead of fucking you. Eve smirks and pours a whole bottle of whiskey on Ryan's phone. You're trying to record me or something? Ryan, honestly, I expected more from you. And all you have is information that I cheated? If you want to threaten me, you'll have to try harder. You can't make money that easily. I'll buy you a new phone. Eve is about to walk off, but Ryan grabs her by the hair and gets in her face. How about this threat then? You and Sohi? Sohi? Who's that? Oh, Please. Her body's at Jew General. Been there for years. The day, the day she died, you were on the roof, weren't you? <laughs> what the hell are you talking about? You're not making any sense, Ryan. Oh, it's making sense, isn't it? And I have the evidence that you were there that day, right here in my pocket. Eve looks terrified. There you go. You're really starting to reveal your true self. And she reaches into his pocket and finds a condom instead. And Ryan busts out laughing. Holy sh I'm not gonna have to haggle with you at all. You actually were there on the rooftop. Oh my god, so good. So good. I was just joking about all of this. I don't want to be a director at JY Construction. I'll take cash. Why don't we start with one million? Eve explodes and she slaps him. You son of a bitch. He picks up the condom and says, you know, this condom is pretty expensive. Strawberry flavored. If I can use this on you, I'll take off 100k. Wow. And I'll take off another 100k if we can do without it. Sound good? Oh wait, but I almost forgot. You only said you had a minute, and it's already been a minute. And Ryan's busting out laughing, and Eve's eyes go crazy crazier than we've ever seen them, and she looks completely unhinged. She grabs an expensive liquor bottle off the table and slams it against his head once. There's blood dripping down. He tries to get up and she does it again and again until there's blood all over the marble floors. And she's hyperventilating and she thinks that he's dead. So she pushes him with one of her high heeled wearing shoes, but he grabs her with his fingernails and digs so deep it leaves a massive cut. Oh my God. Completely cutting her foot in the process, but she bonks him one more time and she falls over in pain. Blood everywhere, Ryan's blood. Wait, yeah. so he got her DNA in his yeah. fingernails? And she starts panicking, trying to clean the blood off of everything. There's blood everywhere. She has her PI henchman, who is also the police chief from when, remember Diana was, had to go to the police and he ignored because he's best buds with Eve's mom. Oh, now he's a PI. He's still a police chief, but he makes more money being their little PI. He's police and PI? Yeah, yeah. How is that legal? It's not, no. Oh, they pay him oh, millions of dollars. Like he's doing it on the DL. Oh yeah, oh yeah. He's just working for them wow. on the DL. They make sure that Eve is going to take care of the security cameras and they're going to take care of Ryan's body in the cleanup. They bring Ryan's body to an abandoned funeral home to have him buried. Or at least that's what they tell Eve. Who tell Eve? The police chief. Well, why is he lying? He's keeping Ryan's body. Just in case? As a pension. He said that right there is his retirement. Oh my god, dude. Meanwhile, Eve burns her bloody clothes and she's freaking out. And she looks up to the sky where she hears David's voice. And then what? What did you do after that? And she goes, what? Who's there? So this is like a flashback while she's under anesthesia. And she wakes up in the hospital bed screaming, terrified, and David is right next to her. How did you sleep, Mrs. Park? And I think she knows she's screwed. David is smiling at her. It looks like you were having a nightmare. You should lie down before you go. 
Who the hell are you? Who, where is it? Where, where are the security cameras? She's having a full-blown panic attack. She pulls out her IVs. What did you do to me? What did you do? I think you're feeling confused because the anesthesia hasn't worn off, miss. Could you explain how you're feeling right now? But Eve runs out and David doesn't try to stop her. He already has what he needs. Eve runs home to check her body, ever so vain. She wants to make sure she hasn't been burned with an, I don't know, a curling iron, I imagine. Have you guys ever sent a message or an email and you're like, oh wait, shoot, what if they take it the wrong way? And you start rereading it and they can either read it, hey, the marketing strategy isn't right, or the marketing strategy isn't right. And I used to stay up at night overthinking this, but now with Grammarly, I sleep like a baby, knowing that my tone, my grammar, my message was conveyed correctly. Grammarly is the digital writing assistant that I cannot live without anymore. I have had a hard time putting my foot down and emails. That's like always been my thing. Even if I have every right to voice my own opinion, I always second guess myself. My emails always ended up super passive. With Grammarly Premium, I have advanced tone suggestions, which helps me communicate confidently. For example, if you type, we may want to consider providing an update. Grammarly is like, no, stand your ground and changes it to, we should consider providing an update. It's professional, confident, gets the message across. I love it. It's changed the way that I've been able to communicate in terms of work and I realize that people respond to my emails much better when the tone is clear and concise. And I never have to second guess if I spelled something correctly, punctuated, because Grammarly makes sure that my writing is professional, mistake free, and clear. And this is not just for people with writing jobs. If you're a student or you work or even if you don't work, you just write emails to your landlord, you know, or your friends. Grammarly works where you do. So get important projects done on time. The right tone can move any project forward when you get it just right with Grammarly. Go to grammarly.com slash tone to download and learn more about Grammarly Premium's advanced tone suggestions. That's G-R-A-M-M-A-R-L-Y dot com slash tone. And David comes home to cook dinner for Diana. They start working in the kitchen together, but he's super protective. Anytime she tries touching anything with a slightly above elevated body temp, he's worried that she's gonna burn herself and she's gonna get hurt. Sorry, I guess my scarves are hard for others to look at. I'm just so used to them now. No, it's not that at all. My concern is why you dressed up so nicely to go see Richard. I mean, you could have gotten your sweats. He's jealous? Yeah. It's just cold today. Call me if you need help, I need to go wash up. And David says, let me heal you, your wounds. I, I can't- gotta tell you, man, these- Doctors No matter what yeah. these K-dramas go, man, these like <sighs> love triangles going is always it's like- always It's always best. there. Yeah, and it's always so good. Yeah. You always got the right pick and then you always got the rich CEO pick. Mm. It's always like- <sighs> man, It doesn't matter if it's a, like a crime show, <laughs> if it's a monster show, whatever. Paranormal <laughs> show. <laughs> And he said, let me start with the wounds closest from your wrists, and then your ankles. It'd be pointless. It wouldn't be. An old wound can only heal and recover by making a new deeper cut. The fresh cut will repair the tissue. I can make the, the precise cuts for you. You might not be able to go back to what you were before, but we can get pretty close. It's okay. It's pointless, David, because I'm not in pain anymore. And she walks off. Later, Eve finds herself stalking David's office, wondering if he really asked what happened to Ryan, or if she's imagining it, when he knocks on her window, car window. <laughs> she lowers it. Are you here for your touch-up? It's not for another few days. <laughs> no, I, I was going somewhere else. I guess I've been feeling a bit out of it since the procedure. Actually, doctor, did I say anything strange that day? Ryan? He say Ryan? Yeah. You just kept saying Ryan's son. Ryan's son. It's common when the anesthesia hasn't worn off quite yet. It's like when you're in between a dream and reality. Huh. Yes, I did have a lot of bad dreams that night. Yes, well, make sure you keep taking your vitamins, but you should be fine otherwise. He smiles and walks off. And Eve still seems quite suspicious. But she has other things to worry about. Like Richard, she texts him that she's going to be cooking dinner, so he should come home. But she's not going to be there to eat it with him, so it's safe. She's just going to make him a dinner, right? The loving wife. But when she gets home, Richard is, Richard is already home eating a dinner. Why are you eating right now? Didn't you see my text? I saw it. Well, why didn't you say anything then? That was my response. Eve is pissed. 
she had gone grocery shopping. So she throws all the groceries into the trash before screaming. Do you play go with Diana? Do you? What the hell are you doing? I just don't understand. How could someone like Diana even manage to catch your attention? Side note, remember how in high school, again, Eve was so jealous of Diana? She's like really missing the point here. Richard doesn't like you because you're a f***ing bully. <laughs> it's got nothing to do with Diana. How could someone like her catch your attention? She made me curious when we met. I found myself waiting for her at the Go place, and when I met her, I wanted to beat her at Go. But I lost my upper hand and I blew it because I was cornered. But a part of me even wanted that too. I liked it when she cornered me in that Go match. <laughs> and Eve says, you know that's cheating. You cheated on me. No matter how you phrase it, that's emotional cheating. Cheating. And Richard scoffs. Seems unfair coming from you, but all right then. But I'm not asking you about Jay, am I? Boom, finally. Eve is in reality. She gets that confirmation that her husband knows what she's been doing behind his back. But that's not the only thing she might be confronted with. Mina is brainstorming ways to find Ryan. I guess she seems to be the only friend who cares about this guy to a degree. She finds Jay's parked car and asks the driver to give her tablet behind uh, the driver's seat. The driver's like, you're not Jay's girlfriend. I drive all of his girlfriends. I don't remember you. She calls Jay and says, babe, I left my tablet in the back of your car. Can you f***ing tell your driver to open it? And he says, open the car. And he hangs up on her. <laughs> so she gets the tablet, but it's not her tablet. It's Ryan's tablet. And she knows the passcode. It's 696969696969. And all the devices are synced because she finds an audio recording from the night of his murder. Remember, he was recording meeting up with Eve. I don't know how it's synced. iCloud is a before Eve poured the alcohol on his phone, all of that was recorded, and Mina is hearing what happened that night. And she's fucking maniacally laughing. Because this mm, is her ticket, too. Uh... Meanwhile, Jay is taking a security CCTV hard drive to an IT guy to see if he can recover the footage. He wants to know what happened October 19th and see why Eve wanted the footage deleted in the first place. Now, in a happier part of town, and I'm not sure if this is even happy, but Sunny is finally being sent to America. She got her student visa, found a homestay. And Sunny said, thank you for helping me, Diana, for helping me start a new life. Diana says, have fun, and Sunny hugs her. I swear I'll be a good person. I'm going to study hard, and I'll go to museums, and I'm going to become someone who has the ability to change people's lives just like you do. That's a good dream, Sunny. But you don't want to be like me. I'm not a good person. And the two of them hug awkwardly before Sunny is sent back to the nurse's office, her nurse's house. She has like a week left before she leaves. But when Helen is about to leave to see her at the airport, Eve is standing at her door. She refuses to take off her shoes when she walks in. Mm -hmm. I heard your daughter dropped out of school, and I don't see any bags here, so that means if you're not leaving, you're sending your daughter away. Where is your daughter, Helen? Answer me right now. What? Huh. Your purse. Are you going somewhere? Is she leaving today? Like right now? Oh my god, it is today. So I guess you really aren't scared of me. Are you really trying to leave to see your daughter? Don't you know Mina is a flight attendant? Do you want me to find out where your daughter is headed right now? Helen drops to her knees. I promise I won't go. I'll do whatever you want, please. Just leave my daughter alone. Does Diana have another little helper? There's also a man, I think. There's a man. What? A man is helping her. What does he do? I don't know, I can find out, but please. Well, if you try anything, I'll drag your daughter here. I won't, Eve, I swear. I won't, ma'am, please. Good. And what you were doing before for Diana, keep doing it. Jay, Sarah, and Mina, keep following them. I want you to find out who's meeting who, when, and where. Got it? Yes, ma'am. Oh, and your husband hasn't, coming, hasn't been coming home recently, right? I've been giving him some money to gamble, but not today. He'll be coming home early. You deserve to be punished. See you soon. We see that Helen isn't able to go see Sunny at the airport. Instead, she's being beaten by her husband who is demanding to know where Sunny went. And we hear a letter that Helen wrote to Sunny's new homestay parents in America. Sunny was the only ray of sunshine in my entire unfortunate life. I promise that I won't ask for much. Sunny doesn't have any allergies and she's healthy. So please let her try a lot of different foods. I am sending my joy to you and please, Give her so much love. Please love her. And Helen smiles as she's being beat because she knows Sunny will never get beat again. 
and she tells her husband she's no longer scared of him, and he threatens to kill her. Eve is not the only one in the family causing havoc, though. Eve's mom is also busy. She has a mole in the hospital that reported to her that the director's son David is poking around Sui's body, who is not in the mortuary like everybody believed. Eve's mom is like, what do you mean Sui's body is no longer in the mortuary? Her body was frozen? What do you mean her body was frozen? And she's screaming at the police chief to figure out what the hell is going on! Why is she frozen? What if they perform an autopsy on her? They're all freaking out. Meanwhile, David is purchasing an abandoned funeral home. Whose body is in an abandoned funeral home? Ryan's body is being kept in an abandoned funeral home. And he just happened to bought it? No. Helen had been following the police chief around. Uh -huh. Okay, And he had frequented this abandoned funeral home multiple times, but it's an abandoned building, so why would he come here? You're then Helen me... went to the outside meters. Wait, sorry. Yes. You're telling me the police chief, the private detective, yeah. is being followed by this grandma? Uh, yeah. <laughs> What's there not to believe? So the two of them, Helen and Diana, go over to this abandoned funeral home and they realize that the power had been being used the whole time. An average home uses like 200, I don't know, they're... I forgot what they said, like 200 watts of power. I don't know, don't quote me on it. But this funeral home has been using a lot. And if it's an abandoned building and the lights are never on, why the fuck would they be using so much power? Mm. Mm hmm They're holding Ryan there. A body is needing to be preserved. Apparently the owner of the funeral home lives in LA and the property has been up for sale for the past three years. Nobody wants to buy an abandoned property. A nearby shop owner has been watching over the property for the owners, but he's been taking the bribes from the police chief to store Ryan's body there. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Well that same shop owner with some money lets Diana and David see Ryan's body. He's relieved when he finds out that the couple are not calling the cops on him. And after seeing Ryan's body, Diana theorizes that this is police chief Shin's insurance from Eve and her family. And this is a flashback that we get. And once they think that, they get Eve into their clinic. And remember how she was under anesthesia? Mm -hmm. David had grabbed a piece of her skin from her foot scar mm -hmm. and preserved it. Mm -hmm. We'll get back to it. Meanwhile, Helen goes to meet with Eve, which has me questioning which side she's on, but... I'm thinking it's Diana's because all the information she's giving is stuff I think Diana wouldn't mind her knowing. So, have you looked into the guy that Diana has been seeing? Yeah, he's a plastic surgeon with a clinic in Samyang. <gasps> he's very young and accomplished, and his clinic is always full. Oh, don't even get me started on his looks. He's like, this is so tall, so tall. Focus, lady! Oh, uh, his name is David Ju. He comes from a family full of doctors. David? Ju? That motherfucker. Who's... Oh my god. Who's his family? They aren't connected to the Jew General Hospital, right? Oh, how did you know? Yes, I heard his family owns the hospital. So do Jew General? Yeah, they own it. Eve is pissed and terrified. She starts stalking this whole Jew General Hospital, and in front of her, she hallucinates and sees Hui's burned and tortured body standing in front of her. And she looks again, and she's no longer there. But Eve is not the only one struggling. Here's a new plot in the works. Helen had, and this is kind of like up in the air at that moment, but Helen had accidentally left evidence for her husband to find. A bag of cash, a burner phone, and instructions. And her husband is like, what are you hiding from me? And she said, I don't know. Some lady came up to me and just told me to text this woman that I know that her daughter killed people and I would get money for it. Are you following? Okay, okay. no. So Helen left a bag. Yes. On the floor of the apartment. Yeah. And when her husband tries to look at it, she's acting very suspicious. She's like, don't look at it. Of course her <sighs> husband's going to look at it. Inside is filled with cash and is a burner phone. <sighs> and he's like, you tell me right now or I'm going to kill you. What's going on? And uh -huh. she says, some lady came up to me and told me to text this woman. And I have her name and address. And threaten her, blackmail her into saying that I know that her daughter killed two people. Saying, someone came up to me and told me to text Eve's mom. Like, I know your daughter Eve killed people. And this dude is like, that much money for one text message? Uh -huh. Holy fuck, imagine what we can get out of that lady. He's so excited. Oh, so the Helen trying to use the husband. Okay, the husband's probably gonna blackmail the mom and the mom probably gonna kill the husband because, mm -hmm. ah man, these people are playing a lot of chess, yeah, I see. Yeah, Diana and Helen be playing chess because that was the thing with part one. Diana never struck me as someone who was gonna actually kill someone herself. 
So I always thought maybe she was going to get henchmen, like hired、oh. help to do it, but that doesn't seem like her style either.、Mm. So I was confused how she was going to kill Helen's husband, but maybe this is how,、mm. right? Oh, he's so f- excited, and Eve's mom is not excited. She's getting these random texts saying, "I know someone. I know your daughter killed someone." She's freaking out. She hasn't responded. Another text comes in. You better reply, or you're gonna get in trouble. She goes to meet with the police chief, who's pissed. Are you f- insane, lady? You can't just show up at the police station. Well, you're ignoring my calls. You won't respond to my texts. You won't even show up. So where am I supposed to go? I have to stick around till six today, or I'm gonna get fired. Okay? Yeah. Well, then you shouldn't have asked me for more, mo- for more money than what they're paying you here. Did you think all that money in your bank was really yours? Okay, I get it, lady. Calm down. That crazy bastard won't stop calling me and texting me. That's why I sent you his personal information. So he found out who that number is connected to. It's Helen's husband, okay? And she's like, "And what am I supposed to do with that? You should have taken care of it, you worthless piece of shit!" Come on now, that's a step too far. A step too far. You, you, a police officer with a house in New Zealand and paid for the kids to study abroad. This is a step too far. You could barely pay your mortgage, but now you own a motel under your sister's name, and I'm going a step too far. You, you were just a pathetic loser. I even bought charms from my shaman to protect you from your own terrible. Fate. I'm the reason you live like you do. But these people have no chills. Bro, no chill. Like, like they don't. Like you are so rich. Go calm down and go to Chanel, have a shopping spree, and like I don't know, check into the Four Seasons, get a spa, get a little spa day. Yeah. Why are they so f- crazy? I don't know. What's wrong with people? And the police is like, are you trying to take credit for everything I've done to come this far? <laughs> credit? You were more obedient when you were taking my money. Jesus Christ, lady! All of this is starting to get very old, especially this hold that you have over me. I guess there's no such thing as friendship. I guess we're just accomplices, right? And he storms off. Meanwhile, Jay gets a delivery to his house, a USB drive from Diana, and he calls her. What the hell are these pictures? So, do you remember Mr. Chu, the evil teacher at the、yes. school that was gonna stir some? Oh up? my God! Yes. He was trying to stir some up with Diana. Like、right、giving、now. her extra work and like just really evil, and、uh, she said, "I was debating whether to share this with you or Richard, but I chose you since you're Yeshua's father." And so, so what? And he goes through the pictures, and first, some of them are just cute photos of the kids playing on the playground, and then the rest of them are up the skirt shots of the <gasps> kids playing on the playground. It's that teacher. Yeah. What the hell? Who took this? His name is Mr. Chu. He's a teacher at the school. He often takes pictures of the kids while they play. Yeshur is often in the pictures. Jay is so pissed he starts speeding to the school, and we see Mr. Chu at the playground smiling at the kids while holding his Canon DSLR camera. He asks、uh. the kids to show him how good they are at hanging from the monkey bars upside down, and he starts taking pictures, literally up their skirts, or he's trying to. But Diana stops them. Girls, it's time to get going. Go wash your hands. It's time for lunch soon. Mr. Chu looks pissed. He turns around. Why does it always seem like you're hovering, Diana? It's quite rude. They get inside, and he says, "Where are the papers I asked for?" And she hands them to him because, like, he's a senior in the school, so he can make her do things. Newspaper. Like a、uh, like reports she had to do. Oh. And each page he goes through, he drops it on the ground. And once he's done, he says, "All of this is bad." Look, Diana. I don't think there's a nice way to say it, so I'll say it directly. Go ahead, Mr. Chu. I hate insubordinate. I respect your opinion. I've had it with you. Follow me out. But before they can leave, Jay storms in. Where the f- is Mr. Chu? A teacher stops him. C- can we help you? Yeah, you can. Where the f- can I find that son of a? B-? Uh, right here. I'm Mr. Chu. Who are you? What is this about? You, huh? You in this camera, and he picks up the cannon, and he smashes Mr. Chu's head with the camera. Pockets the SD card. Mr. Chu is screaming on the ground. Call, tell, cop, cop, call the cops. Nobody's listening to him. Jay runs up to him, picks him up, slams him up against the wall. Hey, clench your teeth unless you want to swallow them. And I don't think you want to get the cops involved, you fucking pervert. And he continues to beat him until the teachers finally call the cops, and Jay only stops beating Mr. Chu when he sees tiny little shoes next to him. And he looks up, and Yeshur is crying. What the hell? What is she doing there? I don't know. She calls her dad hyperventilating, 
And Richard is like, yes, Lord, tell me again. You saw what? Uncle Jay came to the school and he, he did what? Meanwhile, Jay is brought to the police station where his lawyer is sitting with him. And Jay is pissed. Don't keep calling the guy a victim. He's not a victim. And the police is telling him, yeah, these are two separate charges. Like, we have to charge you for assault. And then we're going to charge him for the pictures later. But two separate cases. And he's pissed. But then the door knocks. And a very richer, more educated looking man walks in. Hi, I'm JY Construction's legal team. And then in comes Richard. Richard basically helps Jay get out, bails him out, because JY Construction's name is like really strong. Mm -hmm. Jay's lawyer thanks JY's legal team for helping them settle, and the lawyer says, yes, don't worry, and as for the photos, we will be pressing charges both civil and criminal against Mr. Chu. But Jay is pissed. In the, the police parking lot, his ego is bruised that JY's name had to be used to get him out of prison time, and he says, why the f*** would you do that? I should be the one doing that, did you think? Richard scoffs, and what could you do, Jay? Please tell me, what right do you have to press charges? You know right, don't you? You know I'm Yes Horse's father. You're an even bigger son of a bitch than I thought you were. I'm warning you. Back off, Jay. <laughs> this fucking asshole. And he tries to punch Richard in the face, but Richard ducks and punches him straight in the back because apparently CEOs undergo, like, I don't know, crazy WWE. WWE. What's WWE? WWE.com. YouTube. MMA, I don't know, one of those uh, three-letter acronyms for wrestling, okay? Mm -hmm. He punches him back, and his lawyer stops him. And the lawyer's like, you shouldn't be doing this. We're outside a police station. Jay tries to punch him again, but Richard is not only super rich, but again, master at fighting. He doesn't take a single hit. He ends up punching Jay multiple times, and Jay is embarrassed. He screams at his lawyer, let me go! His lawyer is nowhere <laughs> near him, and his lawyer goes, I've already let you go. Like, no one's holding you back. But Jay's like, let me go. <laughs> He's a comedian? Yeah. And Richard's like, I'm not doing this for you. My family is none of your business, and I'm warning you, never come near my daughter ever again. You asshole. And Richard and his lawyer walk off. They get a restraining order against Jay, and when Eve comes home, she's confused why Richard has a slightly bruised lip. And why is Yeso at your mother's place? What happened? To your lip, a fight? I don't think we should talk right now, Eve, as I don't have anything nice to say to you right now. So I can't even ask why my daughter left school early. Why are you acting so superior right now? I'd rather have an argument. I'd rather you be mean. Richard puts his coat down. Fine then. Let's talk. I'm not sure where to start, so this is good as place, good a place as any. My wife's lover went to my daughter's school claiming to be her father. Do you still want to argue now? Eve, in fact, did not want to argue now. But Richard kept going. You're wondering if I know who is Yeshur's father. I know everything. I know all your little secrets, Eve. You have no idea how much I'm holding back. Even after all of this, the only thing that you truly care about is yourself. Yeshur is suffering, and you want to argue with me? At least I tried to protect us, Richard, with those secrets. You destroyed it by dragging them all out into the light. And what did you want to protect? Our marriage? Your career? Yeshur? Your lover? Well, you couldn't protect any of it. So let me make this very clear. Yeshur is mine, even if you're not. And with that, he leaves Eve in tears on the ground. Meanwhile, the Jew hospital is being investigated for illegal storage of a corpse. I guess the police chief is still Eve's family's little baby, and he comes in with a warrant to search the freezers and the morgues. We find out that it might not have been completely legal for the hospital to store Sui's body in the freezer. So Sui's mom was begging them to get answers, and they had nothing, and she couldn't afford to keep Sui's body in the morgue. And um, they were going to send her to a funeral home, but she was begging on her knees with the morgue director. And David's father, the general director of the hospital, overheard. And he decided to make the executive decision, and he told the morgue director they need to move the body to the freezer. Why? Because Sui's so mom keeps saying it wasn't a They can keep it in the morgue? Her body will decompose in six months. Oh, uh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, but she, they don't even know if they're legally allowed to do that without police consent. It's just weird. Hmm. And so uh, the doctor said, she says it's not a suicide. And the morgue director is trying to plead with him. Yes, but that's not our concern. The, the hospital can't be held liable for incurred costs or we don't even know if we can do this. David's dad smiles. I think it'll be sorted out soon. They say good triumphs over evil. Let's take care of Zoe's family until it gets sorted. And now the search warrant ends up on his wife's desk, the new director of the hospital, David's mom. 
Because he's dead, remember? He was murdered by a serial killer. David's dad. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And she's a bad bitch who can't be messed with. The police tell her that she's going to need to move the body back to the morgue. And he even throws in the fact that they're not sure the intentions of why they froze Hui's body. The police say, what if the hospital staff were trying to run some sort of illegal testing on Hui's human body? David's mom is not having it. She said, her body will stay here. It's clear her death was suspicious. Until we can find answers, her body will stay here. That was our intention, and that is our intention. Damn. Have I made myself clear? And she was basically like, if you wanna if you wanna search the freezer, get the Ministry of Health involved and not your little police station. Wah. Yeah. Wah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Wah. She said, get the minister down here, you stupid bitch. Oh, I love these people. <laughs> See, that's what I love about K dramas. Okay, it's super unrealistic, but these comebacks. These comebacks. These are the comebacks that you come up with in, in the shower. You're like, oh, I should have said that. You know? That's this. They're doing it all. Meanwhile, Diana's mom is drunk and calling Diana nonstop, trying to find ways to make more money off of her, trying to find a way to get her fired. She has been trying to get bribes from all the parents to get them good grades for their kids. She says, I'm Diana's mom. You give me 100K, your kid will get the best grade. These are elementary school kids. What the f Regardless, the parents are pissed and they vote to make sure that Diana is suspended. Diana is shocked and she runs home to the apartment where her mom is staying. And she sees her mom just designer shopping bags everywhere. That was the last thing you should have done, mom. You can track me down here and show up and invade my life like the shameless that you are, but the one thing that you shouldn't have done is side with the monster that ruined my life. How could you do this again? How could you abandon me like this again? It was the one thing. I don't know. Like it seems like she's she has such a soft spot for her mom. You know, Even the mom is literally on the other side, actively trying to ruin her life. Yeah. I would even have more resentment for my mom yeah. knowing all this. These are yeah. my bullies, and this is what you're doing. Like, come on. Her mom starts laughing and gathering all her new goodies. It was the only thing that you should have never, ever done. And her mom says, do you even know how much these are worth? Dan is crying and she grabs a knife and starts ripping up the designer bags. And her mom screams, hey, don't do that. Diana's mom slices her cheek with a box cutter by accident and blood starts dripping down and they have a moment, Diana's cheek, where they stare at each other. And Diana goes frantically, just slashing all the designer bags, ripping up all the clothes. And her mom keeps hitting her from the back, trying to get her to stop, like with her arms and hands. Diana is like fully broken in this moment. She goes to her car and she's crying. And in that moment, a car stops in front of her and it's raining outside and is blocking her so she can't get out. Korea's alleyways are no joke. She can't get out. And she's honking for the car to move. But Jay gets out in his Bentley. Hey, what are you doing? Come out, Diana. Let's have another teacher-parent conference. I saw Richard at the police station. I thought I was the only one that you told about these pictures. Or are you two-timing me or what? Another car pulls up and almost hits Jay and sends him flying to the side of the road. David gets out and runs up to Jay. Jay is super pissed. He's on the ground and his umbrella has fallen. He's getting wet from the rain. Oh man, sorry. I recently just got this car and I'm still adjusting to it. Are you hurt? It's David. Okay, so just to give you an idea, I think David was driving a Hyundai and Jay has a Bentley. And Jay's like, oh my God, this f***ing ass. Are you f***ing crazy? Are you f***ing drunk or something? No, sir. Why did you stand in front of someone else's car in the pouring rain, dressed in all black? If it weren't for my high-performance car, I could have hit you. <laughs> Be more careful next time. You don't want to die, right? What? Jesus Christ, are you f***ing psycho, aren't you? Here's my card. And he puts his card on Jay's little front lapel pocket. Now you know how to reach out to me if you need anything more, right? And he gets back in his car, and he distracts Jay long enough for Diana to drive off. He literally gets in his car and starts inching closer to Jay, until Jay is literally sandwiched between him and his own little Bentley in the back. And he's like, what the fuck are you doing? And he's like, sir, I'm telling you, you gotta get out of the way. I'm not used to this car. <laughs> Diana uses this opportunity to reverse out of the alleyway and leaves. And then eventually, David goes back to his house where she's sitting in her little camping tent, holding her bloody cheek, shaken up. And we see David's shadow pacing around outside the camping tent, <laughs> worried for her. And Diana says, I'm okay in here. Are you okay? That's good. That's good. I'm okay out of here too. What are you up to right now out there? You know, just trying to show you 
that I'm here for you. Was it that obvious? Diana is moved to tears and she says, can I ask, how did you find me there? Your mother reached out to me. She found my phone number. Eve must have given it to her. Just so you know, um, I'm sleeping in and I also plan to sleep really early tonight. So just get some rest. Good night then. Good night. And we see David walking away from the tent with his little first aid kit for her cheek. And it seems thanks to him, Diana does indeed get some rest and she must have had enough energy the next morning to go to church where Helen is there watching her and calling Eve. But see, this is why I know Helen's not working for the other side. Because in that moment, Diana, when she's walking into the church, she walks into one of her henchmen. She also hired some gangsters too, who can play this game, okay? These gangsters are like her little buddies that do for her. And uh, Who's they hiring the Diana. So Diana now has little minions yeah, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. They're nameless little okay. henchmen, right? Okay. She like buys drugs from them and stuff. It'll come in handy later. Okay. But on the way into the to the church, they pass each other and the henchmen hand her a phone, a cell phone. And Helen sees it, them mm. exchanging the phone. And Helen calls Eve. Hello, ma'am. I thought you should know, Diana Moon is now entering a church. And Eve smirks, a church? What, is she gonna repent all of a sudden now? I don't know. Who knows if God is even listening to her now? Hey lady, cut it. Why should I even care? Well, ma'am, the church she's at right now is the one owned by the parents of your friend, right? Seda? And we see Seda studying a cryptic text message she got from an anonymous phone number. She got pictures from heroin laid out in front of the underground chapel. So the church has the main chapel and there's like an underground basement chapel that's been abandoned. Mm -hmm. And someone had put drugs there. Okay. And it basically says, go if you want. Like the drugs are there for you. And she's what? like during withdrawal. And it says, welcome to the Garden of Eden. And during the service, Diana texts a mass text to every single number in the congregation that there is a surprise for them at the underground chapel and they need to bring their phones to record it. Yeah. And she like leaves a hint about something about the preacher's daughter doing some nasty so Sarah takes the bait and she goes and she's passed out on the ground of this abandoned underground chapel right underneath the main chapel with a needle sticking out of her arm in like a drug induced bliss and she starts hallucinating and she sees Ryan standing there and he says do you remember that phone call from the beginning of this um video where he's basically like you were down on all fours mm -hmm, mm -hmm. well we find out that they had and she was like crawling around the ground down on all fours. Uh -huh. It was like kind of gross, but she's like masturbating to that memory in front of the giant cross of the underground chapel. Like right at this moment. Right at this life. moment when all the congregation are oh. running down to the chapel oh my God. and now they're all taking pictures of her doing the nasty, uh, mascarponing at her parents' church in front of a giant cross with a needle stuck out of her arm. So this is, her payback to Sarah, But basically. it's not over. Oh, okay, okay. But this is the beginning. Oh, okay. And just like that, Sarah has been taken down initially. And Diana is watching when Eve storms in and they make eye contact. Was this you? You did this, Diana? Took a lot of effort. Do you like it? You're doing all of this for nothing. Sarah's a first time offender. She'll get out soon. You're not gonna bring us down. Really? <laughs> You're gonna try your best not to get brought down, weather forecaster A. And you're like, what? Weather forecaster A? And right at that moment, we see Diana's minion clicking post on a huge forum like Reddit. And it's weather forecaster A's bullying allegations against Hui. And it's written from the perspective of Hui's mother about how her daughter was murdered. And the bully from high school got away with it, and now she's a famous weather forecaster, married to a rich, powerful man. Is they, she her identity? They never list <gasps> her, but it's pretty easy. Like, they left enough clues for oh. the internet to go f***ing insane, which bullying in Korea is such a huge thing. Okay, bullying in the United States is like, you're fugly. Do you know how many times I've been called fugly? And then I'd be like, what's fugly? You're f***ing ugly. <laughs> okay, that's what it means. In Korea, they will literally disfigure you. Like, it's... Insane. And Eve's phone starts getting blown up. And all of her friends on all her social media platforms are asking her, wait, is this you? Oh my God, is this about you? No way. Hey, are you okay? 
Everyone is accusing her of being weather forecaster A. And Eve screams, what the f have you done? Sarah might get out of this, but you definitely won't. You're a murderer, and Ryan wasn't your first. So Diana has just told Eve that she knows Eve that has not only killed Ryan, but also Zoe. Eve's face changes from panic to pure hatred and anger. Prove it then. Do you have some sort of proof? You have no idea. And Diana starts evilly laughing in Eve's face. And that is the end of part one of part two of the glory. Part one of part two. <laughs> okay, this is like episode one of part two of the glory. Episode two, the finale is gonna be up next Monday because this video is gonna be like, I don't know, 25 hours long. Oh my God. It's so crazy. It's so good. Please stay tuned. Go watch that when it comes out. <laughs> but please stay tuned because it's crazy. What are your thoughts? Who do you want her to end up with? Come on, David. Yeah, but how do you think she's going to get revenge? Do you think she's going to go easy on any of them? Or do you think any of them are going to get off easy? Will one of them redeem themselves? Mm. You'll find out on Monday. And that's it for today's video. And I'll see you guys next Monday. Well, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye.